Hey, my name is Alex and today I'm going to teach you how to create this logo render by using Element 3D within After Effects. A few handy things that you will need is obviously Element 3D and FX Console by Video Copilot so you can take a screenshot. Obviously we can render a single frame but FX Console is free and it makes it a lot more convenient. A few other handy things but are not required would be Pro Shaders 2 Pack for the textures. Adobe Illustrator to create masks so Element 3D can read that and extrude a logo and optical flares in the top right corner. These extras are not necessary, they're just convenient to have. So without further ado, let's get started. So let's create a new composition by clicking this button here and have the width and height to about 1000 by 1000 pixels, basically a square and I'll just call it profile picture. If you don't have FX console you might want to take down your duration to 0.1 so that you get a single frame that you can render out and frame rate doesn't matter. Hit OK. Now let's add in a solid by going to layer, new, solid or hitting Control Y. Let's call this one element 3D and hit OK. Make sure the width and height is the same as the composition size. And in here let's go to the FX controls and right click Video Copilot Element. Let's create another solid as well. This is going to be our logo. So a new solid, logo. Element 3D reads logos by masks, which is this button right here, the pen tool. So you create a mask, and Element 3D will read this and extrude the 3D shape. The ways you can do it is that you can obviously take your logo here as an image, drop it in, drop it in here. Let's solo this and you can take, zoom in and create your mask. But since After Effects is a bit slow with masks in the program itself, I would recommend doing it within Illustrator like I've done here. Illustrator is a lot more convenient when it comes to working with masks. But it is not necessary and you can surely do it within After Effects itself. Once you have your mask ready, drop it below Element 3D and hide it. Go to the Element 3D solid and go, let's go to Custom Layers, Custom Text and Masks and add our logo with the mask onto Path Layer 1. Let's head into the scene setup and start extruding our logo. So hit the Extrude button up here and here you have it. Now we have to create our bevel that we have. So let's go down here to Presets, Bevels, Physical and choose Blue, number 2. And to create some nice reflections, head over to the Environment tab click on the name and choose number 5. I personally find that one really nice. For the bevel shape that I created we need to change some properties. So let's go to the extrusion model, open it, click on the second texture, zoom in a bit with mouse wheel and drag around with middle mouse button and expand edges. So let's expand the edges a bit. And now we have to do the same thing with the back texture here. So let's expand the edges a bit more, maybe a tiny bit more. Here we go. Now, I've noticed that over here, on my texture in specific, there's a cut here. That's because on the extrusion model, under the tessellation menu, I have spike filter enabled to 0.5. So to fix this, I'm going to turn it off. If you have a logo that has round edges, you might want to increase the path resolution to have a smoother edge. And that's pretty much it. For those who have the Pro Shaders 2 pack, I will show you what textures to use. So go to Materials, Pro Shaders 2, Metal, and use the Metal Black for the back one, and for the front use Clean Metal Clean. And there we have it. To change the color of the second texture here, which is blue, click on it, go over to the Illumination menu, and just change the color here. In my case, my entire logo is not one color. I have these shards, which are orange, so I need to change that. Going back to Element 3D, the way we do it is that we have to duplicate it. Because if we go from Texture View to Path View, you can see that each of our mask is individual here. So we can hide some and show others. So to have them both with different texture, let's first rename this, call this letter, duplicate it, hit Ctrl D, and call the copy for shards. Now under the letter, 
let's hide the shards and only keep the letter. In this case, those three are the shards, hide them. And right now you can't see it because our second copy is also enabled. And under the shards menu, I'm just gonna hide the letter. Now, they are separated. But the textures, if we go to texture view, are still linked. So if I wanna change the color here, it's still gonna change it with the letter because the textures are linked. The way to fix that is in the copy, right click on the texture you want to be soloed and duplicate and replace. That way we have another copy, which then you can change the color to. In my case, I want the yellow texture on here to be the same as the yellow here. So I'm just gonna drag and drop the texture again on top. Looking at it again, I, I don't like this little extra layer on top. So I might even just hide the top layer and keep the one below. So let's press OK. Now here we have it. It isn't positioned correctly. So let's go to layer, new, camera, and have it a 50 millimeter. So now let's press C to bring up the camera tool. Click the middle mouse button to position this into view and left click to rotate. So let's see here. That seems like a nice profile in my case. So now to brighten this one a bit more up, let's create some lights for it. So go to layer, new light, and we're gonna need some backlights. And this backlight is gonna be a point light with the intensity of 350, no shadows. Hit okay. Now down here in the view layout, click on it and select two views, horizontal. And the left view, make sure it's on top view. And the right view to active camera. Now what we're gonna do is take this light and position it far behind. And now on the right view, we're gonna take it again and position it until we have some nice reflections, some backlights. I like that one. And you can also duplicate it by hitting Control D or going to Edit, Duplicate. And now let's take and move this light again to some other position. Duplicate it again, one there. And I'll duplicate it one last time and have it there. Now lastly, we will also need a front light. So let's add a new light, call it front light. And this time let's position it so that it will reflect because the left side of the logo here, it's a bit blank. So let's move it. Maybe even hitting P and changing the position up a bit. And that seems all right. One thing that I noticed if we go back to single view, is that I have these reflections here from our environment map, and I don't really like this. So I wanna rotate the environment map a bit. So to do that, let's go into the render settings, physical environment, rotate environment, and I'm gonna rotate the Y. So doing that a bit, maybe I'll leave some reflections. That seems nice, I like that. If you want it completely gone, you can obviously rotate some more and it's completely gone. I will keep a little bit on this side. Now, we're gonna add some realism into this and that is shadows, mainly ambient occlusion. So, let's go to ambient occlusion, enable it. And if you wanna use SSAO, it's a bit easier on the system. You can obviously do that and increase it to something above the 15, like closer to 18. And as you can see, it creates shadows. A more accurate version of that is to click on the mode and use ray traced. I always use ray traced whenever I can, but do note that it is more taxing on the system. For our case, it's just gonna be a single frame, so it won't really matter. Just use ray traced whenever you can. And as you may have noticed, some of the lights can't punch through these shadows, so we need to change their intensity. So let's go to each and one light and hit AA to bring up the options, and let's change the intensity. So for this light, I might change it up. Light number two, I might keep it as it is. Light number three, yeah, turn it a bit higher. Number four, yeah, I'll brighten that one up. And the front light, maybe a bit, tiny bit brighter. Now to further change these settings, you can go into output and mess with the specular and reflectivity. If some of these highlights are too bright, you might even enable highlight compression by turning this one all the way up. That way, it isn't as blown out. Now we might consider adding a background to this. So let's add a new solid again and call this background. 
drop this one below element 3D. And here we go. And let's add something called a gradient ramp. We do that by right clicking, generate, gradient ramp. Let's change the ramp shape from linear to radial and swap the colors. Take the start of the ramp somewhere in the middle and the end of the ramp out in the edges somewhere. And all you have to do now is to just change the start color to something that you like. In my case, I'll keep it white. Keep the end color the same. Now, to make the background a bit more interesting, because it's rather flat, is to add a curves. So let's right click again, color correction, curves. And let's create a slight S shape on the RGB channel. Like that. Now, if you change the start color, it'll be a lot more intense. Next up, we might want to add some optical flares. So let's create a new solid again. Call it optical flares. Add it above everything else. And let's add our optical flares. Go into the options and change it to the conspiracy section and anthrax, or however you say that. Hit OK. Drag this one to the side here so you don't really see this bright area. We're going to drag it off to the side in the top left corner and change the blending mode to screen. If you don't see the blending modes, then toggle the switches at the bottom here. Lastly, we're going to need a single color grading on top of everything. Now, to do that, instead of going to each one and adding a curves, we can add a new adjustment layer. Any effect you apply to this will apply to every layer below it. So let's rename this, call it color grading, and add a curves. And here we make the same S shape. Not as strong as the previous one, but an S shape nonetheless. And we might mess some more with colors, if you want to do that, by going to each channel. Let's do the blue one. And also just messing a bit around. If you want some nice glow onto this, or some nice bloom, let's go into element 3D to the render settings, glow, and enable glow. Take it from illumination to luminance, and now glow intensity to one, glow radius to 10, and now you just crank up the glow threshold. So let's take it up until there's something that fits nicely. I like that, where it's now glowing only on the really highlighted bits. So let's check without and with. Now, if you have FX console, you can just hit control space, hit this camera icon, go into the gallery, and here you have it. Now you can right click, save to PNG, and choose where to save it. If you don't have that and want to do it directly within After Effects, just go to File, Export, Add to Render Queue, and in the settings, we're going to choose PNG Sequence. Hit OK. Now save this wherever you'd like. Render. You will see that it's rendered a single frame. For it to render a single frame though, it is important that in your composition settings, that you have it set to a single duration, like a single frame. Otherwise, it's going to render however many it is. For example, if you're going to render a whole second, since we have our frame rate set to 24 a second, it'll render 24 frames. If you have a second of duration and you want to render a single frame, take the frame rate to 1. Now, if you need the colors change, it's really easy to do that. Just go into the scene setup again, change your shiny light by going into the illumination, change the color, maybe something light blue like this, hit OK, here it's updated, go to your background, change that to light blue here as well, and here you have a new look already. So that was it for me, I hope you enjoyed it and learned some things, thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.